Hey guys, I am here today to show you how to write an annotated bibliography. Don't stress, don't worry about it, because you know I've got a handy dandy handout. Actually, I've got two. I've got an example, and I'm going to walk you through step by step. And of course, if you have questions, you know where to find me, because I will be right here. Let's get started. Okay, here is the first handout. Basically, I'm going to show you how to write one, annotated bibliography. This first part up at the top is just pretty much your format. And I've got an actual example that I wrote that will you can actually see the format in, in action. So technically it is simple MLA, one inch margin, 12 point times two Roman. The whole thing is double spaced and you have to have your heading with your name and the little header. Okay, so then the whole point is that you want to list those sources alphabetically and directly underneath those um, sources, those source citations, what you're gonna do is you're gonna write a little paragraph, okay? It's going to, um, basically, it's going to summarize the article and you're going to kind of, in at least one sentence, you're going to explain how that particular source is going to be helpful for your essay, or maybe it's not going to be helpful. So you can put either or on there. It's, that's the evaluation part. So the whole purpose of doing this, guys, is not to give you more work. I promise you, there is an actual skill to this uh, annotated bibliography writing. Um, when you get to college, more and more colleges are requiring that students submit annotated bibliographies and not just in an English class either. Keep that in mind. Um, so basically, under this little Y subheading, an annotated bibliography serves to help better develop your research skills, okay? Because you've got to evaluate those sources. You're looking for the authority of the source, like basically who wrote it, what, what's their, their credentials, the credibility of that article, especially if it comes from one of our databases on AVL, you know that for the most part, it is a credible article. Um, if you start researching and doing Google searches, then this annotated bibliography is going to really help you kind of evaluate the, um, the depth of your resources and whether it's quality information. So that's really why we're doing it. Okay, step one, evaluate the authority. So if you just take off this, these, the last three letters, you get that word author. Okay, so who wrote it? Basically, you're checking to see the credibility or the credentials, if you will, of that particular author. Scholarly versus popular sources. Scholarly, that's an academic audience. So like when we come down to this little question, who the intended, who is the intended audience? Well, if it's a scholarly peer-reviewed article, then it's an academic or scholarly audience. Popular articles are that those kinds of sources are intended for a general audience. You'll more often see them and in, in the form of blogs, magazines, uh, most of the websites and some books. OK, scholarly articles are going to be in academic books, peer reviewed journals, things like these databases that we're going to search. So these are the kinds of questions that you want to ask yourself. OK, what makes this author an expert? Are they credentialed? Basically, do they have a degree? Is that their field of research? Um, is that person an expert because they are a professor? They are actually working in that profession. Um, the intended audience, you know, we talked about scholarly versus popular audiences. And then you want to check to see, is there a reference or work cited list? Is the source reputable? Now, peer reviewed is like the ultimate uh, source, if you will. Um, that doesn't mean that if you find an article on AVL that is not peer reviewed, that it's not a reputable source. It's just that peer reviewed articles are like the A++ golden egg kind of articles that you want to have. So is it current? This part, number six, we don't really have to worry about that with literature. That's more for science, technology, things that um, are kind of like that time constraint. Um, and then basically, you know, What's the author's thesis? What's the point? Why are they writing that article? In other words, what is the purpose that they, they're, they're writing this article for? So I've, I've given you guys a couple of sentence starters. Keep in mind that very first sentence, it needs to be just one little sentence, okay? 
So this first example, the author, professor of literature at XYZ College, discusses, argues, contends, claims, you know, you can, you can pick a verb, and then you finish that sentence. Who is that author? Where are they professor at? Now, where do you find that information? More often than not, if you look at the very bottom of the article, just above that citation where it says citation MLA 8, then if there, there's going to be, either there will or there will not be a little author biography that will tell you like this person is a, a professor at this university, blah, blah, blah. Now, if that is not available, don't sweat it. Don't use number one as your sentence starter. You've got two others. So in this article, this is where you put the author's last name or this article examines, analyzes, you know, you pick the verb and then finish that sentence. So pick one of these three sentences. Don't worry about the first one if you don't have that biographical information. All right, step two, evaluate the content. Basically, this next part is going to be two to three really good sentences where you are summarizing the entire article, okay? What are the main points in the article that you're summarizing, okay? So, for example, I use Harry Potter. So, Harry Potter is a story about a young wizard who attends Hogwarts, a boarding school for wizards, and his adventures as he battles against the evil Voldemort. Okay, basically, I just summarized in one sentence seven books, okay? So, it's not specific information. You are not going to use... Um, quotes or figures or facts or any kind of detail. It's just an overall, what is the whole gist of the article? What does the author say? The author says this, this, and this, okay? Do not copy and paste information. First of all, plagiarism. Second of all, not a summary, okay? So these are the kind of questions that you want to ask yourself. What are the main, what's the main point or the main points? They may have more than one. This is where you want to look for um, those little subheadings throughout the article. Um, what supporting evidence does the author provide? Do they use other resources or references? They reference, you know, they've got their own um, sources that they're using. Do they do uh, their own research? Uh, do they use direct quotes from the book, the play? the short story, whatever the text is. Um, so then number three, basically you want to make sure that the information is fact, not really opinion, because sometimes authors can throw in their opinion. These are some of those keywords. I think, I believe, I feel this is the best. It's the worst. It's the greatest. It's, you know, those kinds of words. Facts, basically you can prove that information references to page numbers is probably the biggest fact that you're going to be able to see in um, an article about literature. So you want to make sure that it's well researched. So basically, if that author has, you know, either no references or maybe just a handful like two or three, it's not that well researched. Whereas if you have another scholarly article where those references are numerous, like 20, 30 different references, that's very well researched. Think about the sources that the author cites. You know, is the author citing Wikipedia? Not in a database. I probably can guarantee that's not going to happen. But when you're looking out on one of these Google searches, you want to make sure that it's not the mommy blogger, that it's more academic and scholarly in nature. And so then you want to check for bias and especially um, misrepresentation of information. Maybe they're leaving out stuff or um, the errors that they have are based in fact that they're not giving you the exact facts. Okay, some sentence starters. Now keep in mind for the summary portion, you're going to have two to three sentences. Okay, so I give you six sentence starters. So you're probably going to use two to three of these sentence starters. Whereas in the first one, you're only going to use one. All right, last part, evaluate the relevance to your paper. Basically, this is, you're going to explain in one really good sentence, is this source helpful to you in your research? Okay, is it useful to support your topic, your thesis? Does it provide some more information? Does it 
does it generalize information or does it do kind of a, a, a poor um, reiteration of, of information you have in another article? Maybe the other article has the same information, but it's much better than the one that you're actually writing your annotation on. Um, does it help to answer your question? Does it give you, does it make you think about it completely differently than you, you know, originally set out to? And again, I've got five different sentence starters. Basically, you're going to say, this article is relevant to my topic because finish that sentence. Or it's useful to your research, finish the sentence. But you could also say, you know what, this one's not going to help me at all. Okay, well, here's some sentence starters that will support that as well. Okay, or this article will support or defend my point about, you know, X, Y, or Z. Okay, you, you decide. So, for example, let's pretend, and I kind of, this is my rabbit hole that I went down. Um, I have a topic, librarians in children's literature. Obviously, I'm in, interested in that topic and I'm fully vested in it. Here's how I took that topic and turned it into a research question. So if that's my topic, I want to know about the way in which libraries and librarians are portrayed. Is it positive or negative in young adult literature? So then from there, I created the thesis statement. Although some young adult literature still relies on the negative librarian trope, librarians and libraries are gaining a more positive representation due to the proliferation of social media and many librarian positive characters in television and pop culture. OK, so if that is my thesis, I'm looking for um, positive and negative uh, characterizations of librarians in in young adult books fiction. OK, so here is my example. Note that in that sample annotated bibliography, you got to have your header just like you would on a research paper. You've got to have the heading with your name, your teacher's name, the, the class. So. Mrs. Schwartz's names would go there and you would have English 11 and then you would put the date and then annotated bibliography centered, no quotation marks. It's not in italics, underlined, bolded or anything. The entire document is double spaced. There is not four spaces in between any any of these lines. OK, so the very first thing you're going to have is the citation, which you basically just copy and paste. You're going to have to format it, of course, but you're going to copy and paste it from that article. And then you have your paragraph underneath where you do that very first line where you're talking about the author and that author's thesis. And then the next two or three sentences you're going to summarize. And then the last sentence is how is it useful for you in your research? So here's just a little bullet. Well, they're not really bulleted, but here's just a little checklist of those particular um, uh, format instructions. So the sample, I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it. So this is this is my my source. And then here is my paragraph. So Mary P. Fryer, an academic librarian at Northern Michigan University, investigate the positive and negative portrayals of librarians and libraries in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series. So I've given you right here that information was given at the very end of the article. OK, so that's how I know that. So basically, I just used that sentence starter number one. So here comes my summary. Fryer traces a transformation of Hermione Granger from the novice researcher in the Sorcerer's Stone to expert librarian and master of information in the Deathly Hallows. That's one sentence. Sentence number summary, sentence number two. The author contends that Hermione's expertise in researching and locating information in books results in the defeat of Lord Voldemort by the end of the series. In contrast, Madame Pence is defined as the stereotypical mean librarian, one who offers no assistance in meeting their informational needs, which leads to Hermione's development as a researcher. And finally, the librarian who saves the day. Friar site. OK, so those three sentences, that's the summary of that entire article. Now I'm evaluating this other part about the method that she used to actually write her article. So Friar cites an extensive research and offers textual support from all seven of Rowling's novels to support her thesis. The very last sentence, guys, this is my evaluation. Is it going to be useful? Is it not? And why? 
This article is particularly useful in my research as it offers both, this is the why, as it offers both positive and negative portrayals of librarians in one of the most iconic young adult series, okay? So that is your example of the, the steps that I just took you through on this how to write an annotated bibliography. Okay, kiddos, so that is, in a nutshell, how you write an annotated bibliography. So having those handouts and the step-by-step, -step, maybe those sentence starters, will help you in writing those little annotated paragraphs. You only have two in which um, you have to do for your assignment. So one of them, of course, is the one that was given to you in your packet, and the other one is the one that you went out on your own and looked at on AVL to find. So if you have questions, please email me, um, send me a message, however you want to, and I, I can sit down with you one on one. We can work through it and we can we can get you started to where you feel comfortable writing an annotated bibliography. OK, well, that's all I have for today.